Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Russ with rwgresearch.com. So today I'm going to show you some more stuff with this big coil and the two inch magnet that's inside. Um, what I want to show you today is, a, is an example okay, of inducing current in the same direction as the applied. Now because the magnet is inside of here, which if you have not seen, you can go watch on uh, the last video I posted, I showed you how I did that. So in that video, we put the magnet in here, and in this video I want to show you what it looks like to have the induced the same as the applied. I'm talking about current in this case. So the induced current from the magnet into the coil is going to be in the same polarity as what we're applying. And what's going to happen is this is self-regulating. So the battery resistance, okay, the resistance of these batteries is about 91 ohms for one battery. Okay, these are Rayovac carbon zinc, all right, 9 volt batteries. And these little guys are right at about 91 ohms, okay. So, you can do the math and the calculation. The more batteries that I add, right, the higher the resistance, right, which means when we put them across the coil, they're going to act as a higher resistance and a higher resistance and a higher resistance the more batteries we add. One is like dropping a 91 ohm resistor across the coil. So what I want to show you is how this reacts when I try to move it by hand. Okay, I'm going to show you on the scope what the current looks like, and then we're going to talk about that, and then we'll apply some batteries, we'll apply more and more and more and more, and I'll show you kind of what happens um, where this thing is self-regulating. Um, so let's get started. Before we get started, I want to show you what's on here. Okay, I have the commutator disconnected. I do have a brass flywheel on here, which isn't doing any, anything at the moment. Um, with the coil completely disconnected, you can see it just spins real nice and free. Um, I do have a little indicator mark, which I hope you can see on the back there in the other camera. And the current probe, I'm not using this one at the moment, I'm just using one. And it is basically just across the coil, right? So it's just looped, coil, shorted against itself. That's it. So now I'm going to show you what happens here and what happens there, and we'll get an idea of what is going on. All right, so here we go. Right now, the coil is open. What I just want to show you is that it spins freely. And I also want to show you, show you this, little, this little oscillation right there. That's actually due to the magnetic interaction to my probe from that far away. It's currently set on one milliamps, one milliamp. And what I'll do is short the coil out so the coil is now shorted out and you can see as much as I pull on this it is going to fight me it has pretty well complete resistance against me 100 percent I mean I cannot even pull it um, to, to prove my point what I'm going to do is spin it then short the coil out and you can see it just locks it up even with that big brass weight on there So that is just a demonstration of the coil being shorted and how much resistance it actually has. So you can, you can imagine if I put 91 ohms of resistance on here, it really wouldn't uh, allow me to turn this hardly at all. So let's go ahead and hook up 100 volts and we'll uh, just kind of see what that looks like on the screen. Alright, so now I have 100 volts worth of batteries here. Um, I have the spark gap across the coil because I do not want the probe to be zapped. These probes get out of whack if you have any high voltage. Um, so if it does get out of whack, you'll see it on the screen, it won't be at the zero line anymore. So what I want to just demonstrate is uh, we'll let this thing spin to where it's basically sitting uh, flat or wherever it goes. So here we go. Okay, so that is where the um, magnet wants to sit with the polarity connected like this. You can see I can turn it on. And you can see what the current looks like there. Okay. 
So the current right here, all right, it's a one milliamp scale, so it's about two and a half milliamps. So at full power, it's two and a half milliamps, and the charge curve looks about like that. So now what I want to demonstrate is I'm going to rotate this. So the red is facing almost down, so I'm going to put the red about there. Now what I'm going to demonstrate is when I connect power, okay, what you're going to see is it's going to start spinning, but the current is actually going to be very nulled out, right? It's going to be almost zero. This is going to oscillate a little bit, and then as it's going through, it's almost going to pull no current. And then once it gets through, then it is going to actually go back up to about the two and a half milliamp mark. So here we go. All right, I'll do it again. So what you're actually seeing, okay, what you're seeing right here is actually the current being completely canceled. And it's being canceled by the induced voltage of my battery. And that's a very important, um, that's a very important and interesting thing here is the complete, almost complete cancellation. So I haven't actually done this with two cameras, so this is the first time I'm going to actually see it synced up in real time. So this time I'm going to try to apply current where the magnet is completely square or flat. Okay, so there it is. Now I'm going to let it go. And you can see what happened there. So I'll do it again. So there it is, fully charged. Now it started fighting me. Alright, we'll do it again, see if I can hold it square. So you can see it's producing torque. Okay, so it's actually producing torque, alright, during this flat complete cancellation. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to hold it back. Right, I'm going to actually try to hold it back so we can see if there's more current or less current being drawn when this happens. So here we go. So you can see if I stop it or let it go, I can actually change the amount of current that it draws. So now we're going to go up in voltage, and I won't be able to set my batteries up here so you can see them, and we're going to go ahead and try this with a higher voltage and see what that does. Okay, now this time what I've got is I have 39 volt batteries. You can see it's sitting right at about 297 volts. These are pretty pretty new batteries. Um, the yellow trace here is the battery, and what you're going to see is the battery dip, the battery rise, the battery go above, the battery go below. So whatever the case may be, it is going to move around, and we're going to see that. So I wanted it on there so you can see it. Um, the reason I have the battery voltage on there is so you can see how, that the coordinates with how much current is pulling equates to how much the battery is dropping as well. So I'm out of the frame here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and fire this thing up. We should be about right. So here we go. Alright, i got to turn the current down because it's off the charts. Try it again. Alright, there's full current. That's with it not moving. So you can see the full current potential there. So now what we're going to do is we're going to flip it. Alright. And we're going to watch what happens. Hi Lily, I'm right in the middle of filming. Can you come back in a little bit? Mm -hmm. Okay, can you go out? I'm trying to film a video. I love you. What's this work? You like this? Uh-huh. I'll show you later, okay? <laughs> Bye. All right. I love you too, Lily. I'll come get you later, okay? okay. Bye. Lock them out. They won't like that. Okay. So here we go again. So you can see that the battery voltage and the current both agree with each other. Now, let's see if I can hold it back. 
Hold it right in the middle, I might be able to. There, right there. So it's full current. So you can see, right, that the current is completely cancelled and the battery voltage goes almost up to where it was. Let's move one of these cursors up here. One down here, just to get a reference of kind of where the zero line is there. You can see the battery voltage actually dips a tiny bit above. Not so impressive, but, uh, but interesting nonetheless. So now this time, I'm going to try to hold this back, because earlier I could hold it back at 100 volts, but at 300 volts I don't think I'm going to be able to. Let's give it a shot. Yeah, so I, I cannot hold it back. It's pulling it out of my hands. But you can see that if I don't hold it back, Alright, so you can see the difference here. Here's where I was holding it back. It definitely used uh, about a milliamp of current. Actually, it's on two milliamps now. So about two milliamps of current when I was trying to hold it back. But when it's completely flipped where there's no more induction, you can see it goes back up to its full current. So in this case, it's 246, 6.25 or so milliamps. But over here, you can see when I let it go, it completely canceled it. Alright. And that's what I'm trying to show you. I'm trying to show you that if I hold it back and it doesn't generate as much as it's making, right? But here I was actually producing quite a bit of torque. Okay? Here it was just freewheeling, which makes sense. So now we're going to go on to a higher voltage. Okay, so I forgot to mention the very first one, we had about one kilo ohm worth of resistance on the 100 volts of batteries. At 300 volts, we had about 2.73 kilo ohms, roughly according to my calculations. And now we have 5.46 kilo ohms at 600 volts. So this is not quite 600, it's at 853. But the resistance of the batteries is about that. So now what I'm going to show you is a full load. So here we go. It's just on. So we got about 15 milliamps. And you can see how big the battery voltage drops. So now we'll let it freewheel. Here we go. You can see it's much, much, much faster, much more torque on that guy. But there still is resistance there. However, even though there is resistance there, now we're still canceling out with this much torque. Alright, so here we go again. That time it spun the other way. But you can see, okay, we zoom in here, and you can see that we still are canceling out our torque. I mean our current. So we're canceling out our current here, but we're still producing a pretty tremendous amount of torque. So at full load, we're at 15 milliamps. Now I'm quite for certain if I try to hold this back, I'm going to start jumping teeth on this guy. It'll completely rip out of my hands. But I will hold it back a little bit so we can see what it looks like. There we go again. Again. So you can see, all right, that while it's producing torque, it's only at about um, two and a half milliamps. So it's roughly at the full load of our hundred volts, yet it's about to just completely like rip out of my hands there. I, I really can't hardly hold it back. So that's what I'm trying to kind of show you here. So let's go up to even a higher voltage. Uh, we're going to max it out. We're going to go up to 900 volts. Not quite. So here we go. Okay, so now we are at 867. So this is about 8.19 kilo ohms. Right, so it's a much higher resistance. So there's less um, holding back on this thing from spinning. So what I'm going to do is show you a full load. Here we go. So that's what a full uh, full load with no rotation. We got a, just under 20 milliamps, about 19 or so. I've moved it uh, faster so that we can see it a little better. So now we can see how much faster this rotates. Okay, so it's going to rotate a lot faster and it will still cancel out. Here we go. So it's about to, to rip some teeth off. I'm going to do it again. 
Okay, now I'm going to try holding it back slightly, but you can see that it cancels it out and the voltage goes way up there. So I'm going to hold it back, it's just so I can see it. Alright, I can't hold it back without it, without it going too crazy here. Do it one more time. Okay, so now what I want to see, that I've held it back, now we're producing even more torque than we were. All right, and that's 10 milliamps full scale. This is where I was trying to hold it back. And it's still somewhere around two and a half milliamps. But there's a lot more torque than there was with 100 volts, because 100 volts I could hold it back, and it was saturated at about that amount of current. So, that's it for this demonstration. Now I will briefly talk about a few other things here. Alright, well, there you go. That is the simple test of induce, in, you know, induction current from the magnet, right? And uh, how much acceleration we're getting out of it. We're not measuring torque or anything here. This is a, uh, a very interesting thing because the more and more and more voltage you apply, it seems like it, uh, just by holding it, right, that's not a good quantity of torque of really telling what it's doing. But, while doing that, you can tell that it does, you know, produce a lot more torque every time you step up the voltage. But the current seems to be roughly in the same area. Um, so just take it with a grain of salt. This was just a demonstration I wanted to do because I wanted to express the induction in the same direction as the applied. And, uh, yeah, just give you that little demo, and we'll be doing lots of other tests with this, but one test at a time, just kind of showing you what's going on. So, thanks for watching, God bless, let me know what you think down in the comments, and uh, as always, read the Bible more. I promise, it will help. Okay, praying for you guys. Bye.